Today, two local high schools look to advance to the championship round of our annual tournament here at Lakeshore Public Media that we call Making the Grade. Today we welcome Hobart and Valparaiso. This semi-final match comes your way next on Making the Grade. Lakeshore Public Media and Making the Grade are supported by Chick-fil-A, proudly serving our Northwest Indiana community, helping to support education and developing young minds. This public service announcement is brought to you by NIPSCO. Hitting an underground utility line while digging may cause serious injuries, disrupt service, and result in a fine. Call 811 two business days in advance of digging to have lines marked. It's the 2016 edition of Lakeshore Public Media's annual academic tournament that we call Making the Grade. Hello, I'm your host, Andy Schultz. Thank you for joining us at home or in our live studio audience here. Today we welcome two schools, Hobart and Valparaiso. Eight of the best and brightest students from around Northwest Indiana coming together for one objective. That's the Making the Grade Championship Trophy. These two teams are one step away from the championship round and that semifinal round coming your way here today. We will meet our contestants a little bit later in the show, but before then, let's get some points on the board in our first round that we call Question and Answer. Simple enough, I'll ask the questions, you give the answers. Buzz in if you think you know it. There's no penalty for a wrong answer. Five points for a correct answer. If you don't get it, the only penalty will just give the other team a chance at those five points. Let's get the game rolling here. First five point clue. She is said to have caused an olive tree to grow on the Acropolis. Name Danny from Hobart. Athena. Athena is correct. First five points go to the Brickies. And here comes your next five point clue. Give this generic term starting with P that means rain, snow. Michael from Valparaiso. Precipitation. That is correct. Five points for Valpo and we're even. Name the medieval British poet considered the first to write in English, who was the first to be buried in Westminster Abbey's Poet's Corner and is famous for his set of 24 Canterbury Tales. Ailey from Hobart. Chaucer. That is correct. Five more points for Hobart. You are in the lead. It can absorb neutrons in a nuclear reactor, but can cause physical damage over time if breathed in by workers in the plastic and solar panel industries. Name this metallic element often combined with nickel in rechargeable batteries. Ailey from Hobart. Uh, it is not lithium. Give Valpo a chance at those points. Go ahead, Sylvie. Cadmium. Cadmium is correct, abbreviated CD on the periodic table, and we're tied at 10. Your next five point clue. Name the country that is now revaluing the jewelry seized from its former first lady, Imelda Marcos, when she and her husband were removed from power in 1986. The Philippines. The Philippines. No points lost there. Here comes your next clue. What Asian country has a border with China, that has a border with China, pardon, is marked by the summit of Mount Everest and has a capital of Kathmandu? Michael from Valparaiso. Nepal. Nepal is correct, five more points and you jump into the lead. Give the word that came to English from Dutch for a pretend duck, used by duck hunters to attract real ducks. Katie from Valparaiso. Decoy. Decoy is correct. Five more points for the Vikings. British scientist Thomas Young used two slits to show that, that light patterns could interfere with each other. Thus, light can be treated as a particle in some cases and as what in other cases? Brooke from a Valparaiso. A wave. A wave, that's correct. Five more points for Valpo and you extend your lead to 15. Da Vinci's famous Mona Lisa was painted in what Italian city in the early 1500s, a city famed Kayla from Hobart? Sicily? Uh, it is not Sicily. We will, I'll finish the question for Valparaiso. A city famed for its Renaissance art. Michael, go ahead. Florence? Florence is correct. Five more points for Valparaiso. You hit the 30 mark. 
Made of clay in ancient days, high school chemistry labs now handle it with special tongs to prevent serious burns. Name this small item of lab equipment, now often made of porcelain and specifically built to withstand very high temperatures. Crucible, we're looking for crucible on that one. Here comes your next five point clue. This U.S. president ran for president again in 1912, representing the Bull Moose Party. Michael from Valpo. Theodore Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt is correct. You got the right one. Five more points for Valpo. Which Nobel Prize's annual winner is chosen by the Norwegian parliament and not by Sweden? Looking for the Nobel Peace Prize, specifically on that one. After one round of play, Valparaiso with a 35 to 10 lead. Let's take some time and meet our contestants. We call it Meet the Class. Talking to Avery from Hobart High School, a senior, and uh, you were telling me, Avery, backstage, that just today yeah. you dissected both a cat and a fetal pig. Yeah. Seems pretty interesting. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you look to accomplish when you cut them open like that? Well, for the cat, we looked at uh, identifying all the different muscles in the leg, and then for the fetal pig, we just skinned it. All right, very good. I'm going to stay away from Hobart High School okay. the next couple of days. <laughs> Kayla is a senior at Hobart, and you're going to be attending Purdue next year as a member of the Honors College. What do you want to study? I'm going into Integrated Arts, which is basically a fine arts degree. Sure, and what would you like to do uh, with that? I would like to go into something with animation, mostly in focusing on character development, concept art, and storyboarding. Awesome. Great to meet both of you. We're talking to Danny, who is a senior, going to be attending Valparaiso University next year. It says you want to study environmental sciences, correct? That is correct. So what would you like to do with that? I'm thinking that conservation would be a really cool field to begin into, but I'm not entirely certain yet. All right. You've got some time to figure it out. Yep. All right. Very good, Danny. Nice to meet you. Ailey is a senior at Hobart High School, and uh, you're going to be attending Stevens College in Columbia, Missouri, right? Yes. What attracted you to the Show Me State? Um, they have a very good musical theater program there, which is what I'm going into. Good reason. Yeah. Very good. Well, good luck to the Hobart team the rest of the way. They are coached by John Brumley. On the Valparaiso side, I'm talking to Brooke, who is a junior. And uh, Brooke, you told me a little bit uh, that you're into running. And you run 5Ks, right? Those kind of races? And yeah, my dad and mom and I are all kind of competitive when it comes to it. Um, we like to run the turkey trots. And sure. I think this year we're going to try the popcorn panic five-mile race. Really? Good. Very good. And, and do you have aspirations of a marathon someday? Yeah, someday. <laughs> all right, all right. Your feet will not thank you for that, yeah. but your body will love it. Awesome. Katie from Valparaiso, a senior. Uh, what you were telling me that recently you went zip lining over a river that was that had alligators okay. in it. So what do you think about most? Are you thinking about having fun or the fact that you could fall to your death? Uh, more about having fun. That's good. Yeah. That's not what I would be thinking. Katie, awesome. Are you a, kind of the adventurous type then? It depends. All right. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Good to meet both of you. Valparaiso's uh, third player, Michael, a senior. Uh, Michael, you play piano, and you told me that you recently uh, received a gold rating at the Indiana State School Music Association mm -hmm. competition down, I think that's the, in the Indianapolis yeah, area, in right? Indianapolis. Well, congrats on that. How long have you been playing the piano? Um, since I was in kindergarten or first grade, I've been taking lessons, right. and I really enjoy it. Do you dream of one day playing a big concerto with the orchestra? Um, maybe. But a lot of work, right? Yeah, a lot of work. Very good. Nice to meet you, Michael. Sylvie is a junior at Valparaiso, and uh, you're telling me that you stu that you study the cello and you play the cello in traditional Chinese orchestra. Tell me a little Indeed. bit about that. How did you become interested in that? Um, actually, my, my dad does it, but there's also a Confucius Institute um, that's a Chinese organization at the university that, at VU. Um, and so they have that, and it's just a really interesting cultural mix because I play this Western instrument, the cello, but then there are all these other traditional Chinese instruments yeah. that sound very little like anything we have. Sure, it's no question. Different scales, different everything. All right, well, good luck the rest of the game, Valparaiso. They are coached by Chris Cozy. <laughs> we resume the game, and we head to our next round that we call Pop Quiz. This is a one-on-one -on -one competition. No conferring with your teammates here. It's solo work. It'll be Ailey and Sylvie, Michael versus Danny, Kayla and Katie, and then Brooke versus Avery. We'll rewind and bring it back to the front after four questions. Keep that going until the round is over. Each question worth five points. The first one for Ailey and Sylvie. 
Identify the three-dimensional solid seen in the middle of a roll of paper towels, whose volume is calculated by squaring its radius. Sylvie from Valparaiso. Cylinder. Cylinder is correct. Five more points for Valparaiso. This is for Michael and Danny. What California railroad magnate started the college there now named for his son and named indirectly for him? In California. Stanford, Leland Stanford. This is for Katie and Kayla. What Italian scientist studied the moon with his telescope in 1610, around the time he also studied Jupiter with it? Katie from Valparaiso. Galileo. Galileo is correct. Five points for Valparaiso. Next question coming for Avery and Brooke. Name the Asian country whose current leader, Prayut Chanocha, pardon, led the military coup that removed its previous prime minister. Brooke from Valparaiso. Mongolia? Uh, not Mongolia. Avery, want to take a shot? He says no. Looking for Thailand. Thailand. They always give me the hard things to pronounce. I think it's a trick that somebody's playing on me. Here we go, next one for Sylvie and Ailey. Not even whipping himself and fasting could cleanse the soul of this character who finally confessed his great sin just moments before his death. Name this Puritan minister who is the father of the girl named Pearl in the novel The Scarlet Letter. Arthur Dimsdale, Dimsdale. All right, for Michael and Danny. Give the most common meaning of the Greek root graph used in English words like biography and bibliography. Danny from Hobart. Writing. That is correct. To write is the correct answer. And five more points for Hobart. You trail by 20. Katie and Kayla, this is for you. Give the most common meaning, um, pardon, that was the last question. She won her fourth Tony for playing Ruth in A Raisin in the Sun, and then a fifth eight years after that for Porgy and Bess. Name this American Broadway star whose portrayal of Billie Holiday in the play Lady Day at Emerson's Bar and Grill recently won her a record sixth Tony Award. Audra McDonald, no points awarded there at the end of two rounds of play. Valparaiso with a 40 to 20 lead, but points aplenty coming your way in our next round that we call Class Project. This is group work. You can work together on this one. I'll read three clues that all point toward the same answer. If you get it after one clue, it's worth 30. If I read two of them, it's worth 20. If I read all three clues, you can still get 10 points. You can try at each point level as we get through this round. Ready to go? All right, here we go. The category is social studies. Three clues all pointing to one answer. Here's your 30 pointer. The dust storm known as a haboob was first seen and named in this country that includes the war-torn province of Darfur. Michael from Valparaiso. Sudan. Sudan is correct. 30 points for Valpo and you extend your lead. Here come three more clues pointing to one answer. The category, science and math. 430. His 1935 essay, The Present Situation in Quantum Mechanics, contains the first mention of the paradox named for him. That's all right, no guesses there. Here comes your 20 point clue, same answer. This Austrian physicist has a wave equation now named for him. And here comes your 10 point clue. His famous paradox details how a cat should be Michael from Valparaiso. Schrodinger. Schrodinger. I'm guessing the word cat triggered about seven minds in here. That's good. Nice and well done. 10 more points for Valparaiso. I got to look that up. I didn't know what that was. All right. Three clues pointing to one answer. The category literature and language arts. Hands on buzzers. Here's your 30 point clue. As a noun spelled one way, this word is something you might test during battle. Danny from Hobart. Valor? Uh, not Valor. Anybody from Valpo want to take a shot here? That's all right. Here comes your 20 point clue. As a verb spelled a second way, this word means to bother other people by inserting K 
Katie from Valparaiso. Metal. Metal is correct. M-E-T-T-L-E, M-E-D-D-L-E. They go on and on. All right, after three rounds of play, Valparaiso capitalized on some questions in that one, and they have extended their lead 100 to 20. But there's tons of points here in our final round that we call final exam. Six categories, five questions each, worth 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30, respectively. We'll have to answer them in that order, so you can only choose what you see on the board. The team that controls the board is the last team to answer correctly, except to start the round. Hobart, you trail, so you will control the board first. Where would you like to go? We're going food. Food. <laughs> I love it. Here we go. Ten-point clue in that category. Emmentaler, Stilton, and Limburger are types of this... Ailey from Hobart. Cheese. Cheese. You like food. 10 points. Want to stay there or go somewhere else? We're going to go to food again. All right. 15 <laughs> points in the category food. This fungus, sometimes edible and sometimes highly poisonous, is often eaten in omelets. Michael from Valparaiso. Mushroom. Mushroom for 15 points for Valpo. You control the board. Where to? Um, well, let's go with uh, what is this? World history? World history. It's a 10-point clue in that category. This medieval civilization famed for its exploring, its longships, and its Scandinavian roots gave us Danny from Hobart. Vikings. Vikings, yes, 10 points. Come on, Valpo. <laughs> Hobart, you control the board. Where would you like to go? Food for 20. Food for 20. They like the food on this side. This plant creates a product that is combined with a fungus for at least three months to create a sauce that is popular with Asian food. Sylvie from Valparaiso. Soy sauce? Um, yes, we will take it. Looking for soybeans, but soy sauce was an acceptable answer there. Yes. 20 points for Valpo. Where would you like to go? Let's go back to world history. Going to world history, it's a 15-point clue there. This activist, now considered the father of modern India, was famed for Michael from Valparaiso. Gandhi. That is correct. For 15 more points for Valpo, what would you like to do? Um, let's stick to world history. We're going there again. 25. Or pardon, this is a 20-point clue. This ancient Mesopotamian civilization is best known today for its wedge-shaped writing known as... Danny from Hobart. Samaria. Samaria, yes, known as cumiform. That's correct. 20 points for you. What would you like to do? Food for 25. Food, 25 <laughs> points. They keep going back. This chemical term describes the preservation of food in brine or vinegar. Ailey from Hobart. Pickling. Hip pickling is correct. 25 points for the bricks. You're closing in. Where are you going to go? Food. Finish it up. 30 points. This Lewis Carroll poem contained in Through the Looking Glass begins with the sun up in the middle of the night and ends with its two title characters eating Katie from Valparaiso. The walrus and the carpenter? That is correct. Walrus and the carpenter for 30 points. I was waiting for the food to come in. It came in right at the end. <laughs> All right, Valpo, 30 for you. Where would you like to go? Short stories? Uh, yeah, let's do short stories. Short stories, 10-point clue. This Washington Irving title character goes into the mountains. Michael from Valpo. Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle, yes, for 10 points. You control the board. Uh, short stories for 15. Short stories, a 15-point clue. In this Ambrose Bierce story set in Alabama during the Civil War, the Confederate main character Peyton Farquhar is hanged. Katie from Valparaiso. An occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. Yes, occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. 15 points for Valpo. What would you like to do? Uh, let's do short stories for 20. Short stories, 20-pointer. This Mark Twain short story with a very long title features Jim Smiley, the owner of a trained amphibian. Michael from Valparaiso. Uh, the notorious jumping frog of Calaveras County. Uh, that is incorrect. Give Hobart a chance at it. Go ahead, Danny. The jumping frog of Calaveras County. You guys are, you have all the words right except for one. We're looking for the celebrated jumping frog of Calaveras County. Sorry, Michael, couldn't give it to you the first time. Very close. I believe Valparaiso controls the board. What would you like to do? Um, Go to economics. Economics. This is a 10-point clue in that category. This term describes the difference between a company's expenses and its revenue. Danny from Hobart. Profit. Profit, yes. 10 points for you. What would you like to do? Uh, could we get paintings for 10? Paintings, a 10-point clue. In this classic painting, the dentist is holding a pitchfork. Michael from Valparaiso. American Gothic. Yes, American Gothic for 10 points. What would you like to do? Mm, sure, physics. We're going to go with physics, a 10-point clue. This term describes any space with absolutely no matter in it. 
Sylvie from Valparaiso. Vacuum. Vacuum. 10 points for Valparaiso. What would you like to do? Uh, let's do physics. All right, physics. Five minutes left to go in the game. A 15 point clue in physics. This adjective describes a wave that can only travel through a medium like air or water. Kayla from Hobart. Mechanical. Mechanical. That is correct. A mechanical wave. 15 points for you. You trail. What would you like to do? Paintings. Paintings. We're going for a 15 pointer there. Michelangelo's painting on the far wall opposite the entrance of the Sistine Chapel shows this still future occurrence that will follow Jesus' second coming. Danny from Hobart. Judgment Day. Uh, yes, that is correct, or also known as the final judgment. Either was acceptable. 15 for you, what would you like to do? Could we do paintings for 20? You bet. 20 points in paintings. This oil painting by Spanish surrealist artist Salvador Dali is famed for its three melting clocks. Kayla from Hobart. Persistence of memory. Yes, that is correct. You're on a roll. 20 more for you, what would you like to do? Paintings for 25. All right, 25. This Botticelli work showing Venus in her garden. Kayla from Hobart. Birth of Venus. Uh, that is incorrect. I'll finish it for Valpo. Showing Venus in her garden shares its most common name with both the Spanish and Italian words for spring. Go ahead, Michael. La Primavera. That is correct, or just Primavera was what we're looking for. 25 for you, what would you like to do? Uh, let's short, do stories. short stories. Short stories, 25 point clue. In a Nikolai Gogol story, this title object's owner Kavloff is offered snuff when he clearly can't use it. Shortly after, the object returns to Kavloff's face where it belongs. Ailey from Hobart. No. That is correct. 25 points for you. What would you like us to do? Paintings for 30. All right, paintings, 30 point clue. This painting by Pierre Auguste Renoir depicts a group of his friends eating a noontime meal. Ailey from Hobart. Luncheon of the boating party. That is correct. 30 points for you. You're closing in. Trail by 50. Some big points on the board still. We'll go world history. World history, a 25 point clue. Though the British helped settle parts of Indonesia, this European country's East India Company became powerful there. Michael from Valpo. Uh, the Netherlands? Yes, or Holland. Either one, 25 points for you. You extend your lead. Short stories? Yeah, let's do short stories. Short stories, 30 pointer. This Bret Hart story, title character Tommy, is the very young son of a mother who died in childbirth. The luck of roaring camp. The luck of roaring camp. All right, got to go somewhere else. Valpa, what would you like to do? Yeah, economics. Economics, 15 point clue in that category. In England, the paper money worth 20 pounds shows this Scottish economist who wrote The Wealth of Nations. Michael from Valparaiso. Adam Smith. Yes, Adam Smith for 15 more points. They're up to 290, and that's your lead by 90 there. Um, let's do world history. All right, world history, 30 point clue. We'll round out that category. In 1964, this set of islands merged with Tanganyika, Tanganyika pardon, to form the country of Tanzania. Looking for the islands. Michael from Valparaiso. Zanzibar? Yes, Zanzibar for 30 points. A tongue twister in that one for sure. You're up to 320. Where would you like to go, physics or economics? Um, physics. Physics, 20 point clue. This unit of measure is equivalent to 101,325 pascals. Brooke from Valpo. Kilopascals? Um, that's incorrect. We will give Hobart a chance with one minute left to go in the game. Avery. One atmosphere? Uh, yes, that is correct. One atmosphere for 20 points. Trailing by 100, you got some points up there. See if you can grab uh, them. Physics. All right, physics, 25-pointer. Of the four fundamental forces in physics, this is the only one not described by the standard model. Michael from Valparaiso. Gravity. Gravity is correct. 25 for you. You control the board. Uh, physics. Physics, 30 pointer. Determined when tuning a transmitter antenna, this, qual this quantity, abbreviated SWR, should be as small as possible to allow maximum energy to be transmitted from the feed line to the antenna. Standing wave ratio. All right, 
One more question left in the game, Michael. We're going to economics, right? You controlled it. That's where we're going. Here we go, 20-pointer. This three-word term is the difference between the value of a country's exports and the value of its imports. Danny from Hobart. Gross domestic products. Uh, incorrect. Valparaiso. Take a shot at these points. Go ahead, Michael. Gross national product. Uh, incorrect. We were looking specifically for balance of trade, but that is the end of our game. Final score, 345 to 220. A well-played game by both teams, but it's Valparaiso who will go to the championship round. We don't know who they'll play yet. We'll find out later on Making the Grade. Lakeshore Public Media and Making the Great are supported by Chick-fil-A, proudly serving our Northwest Indiana community, helping to support education and developing young minds. This public service announcement is brought to you by NIPSCO. Hitting an underground utility line while digging may cause serious injuries, disrupt service, and result in a fine. Call 811 two business days in advance of digging to have lines marked.